What's up, metal and heavy music fans? These are more of my picks for the most overrated metal albums of all time. And as always, to be clear, I enjoy pretty much every album on this list. It's not a worst album list. It is a list of albums that I think get a little too much praise and the albums I think deserve a little bit more credit instead. So starting right at the top, we have Meshuggah with Catch 33. This is one of those divisive albums in the fan base. And anytime I put up a video on Meshuggah, particularly my Meshuggah tier list, which I recently updated, I get tons of comments from people who absolutely love this album or like me think that it's just okay it is not bad by any means i appreciate the experimentation i already kind of went into detail about what i think is sort of off about this album compared to some of the other albums in the discography namely a lot of downtime a lot of just kind of like meandering it just doesn't feel as tight to me and then especially the fact that they're using a drum machine on this album is just sort of like a betrayal of what I come to Mashuga for. You are the chosen one! I don't even have a problem with drum machines on metal albums in general. It's just that when it's a very drum and rhythm based band like Meshuggah, then it's kind of kind of put me off. And personally, as regular viewers know, my pick for the album that deserves a lot more credit and doesn't always get it is Coloss. Meshuggah have a very consistent discography. Honestly, they don't have an album that I dislike, but personally, this is my favorite and I just don't see it talked about as much unless someone else brings it up. I have been happy to see that anytime I mention it in videos, I get a lot of support in the comments. But when I see other people list their favorite Meshuggah albums, this one rarely rises to the top. A lot of people say Obzin, which is great. A lot of people say Nothing, which is also fantastic. But for me, Coloss is the way to go. Not a bad song. In fact, all of them are potential singles. Next up is Enslaved with Below the Lights. So like I said, most of the albums on this list I enjoy. In fact, some of them I think are absolutely stellar, and this is one of them. Like, it really is a great album. This is not a litigation on whether an album is bad in most cases. It's mostly that I just think that there are better ones that don't get talked about as much. There are so many great songs on here. I enjoy, like, even deeper cuts like Havenless in particular and the dead stare and then of course as fire swept clean the earth is probably one of the best enslaved songs of all time no question but i still think that pound for pound start to finish this album is not the model of perfection that fans make it out to be at least again in my subjective opinion i think that they have better releases and the one that i think gets brought up the least really out of their also fantastic catalog where there's really no bad albums is Mardrown. Like as far as their transitional period goes, Below the Lights is the one that gets talked about a lot, but Mardrown to me is sort of like the best of all of their elements. You've got that sort of switch into the more progressive influences, but they haven't yet lost also that like icy cold second wave black metal of their earlier style. And then it's like one of their most intensely like technical albums too i would say because the further you get into their later discography it gets a lot more kind of lofty and atmospheric but also in terms of like the proficiency of the instrumentation a little bit more simplistic i would say which is fine i just kind of like the really fast stuff too and mardrum brings tons of that with these crazy tremolo lines that remind me of like Abzu in places. Just very dizzying, but also very complex and also still very atmospheric and varied. And so I think that more people should listen to Bar Drum. I can't even tell you also how many times I've talked about this discography and I see people in the comments saying like, I actually haven't even listened to that one. It just gets like skipped over for some reason and it's a crime. Go listen to Mardrum. All right, switching gears completely stylistically, which we're going to do a lot here. We've got Disturbed with the Sickness. And honestly, for me, this kind of applies to pretty much any popular Disturbed album because there are a few. I know some people have said that they would replace the Sickness with one of their later albums, namely Believe or 10,000 Fists. But honestly, of the most popular new metal acts out there, Disturbed is one that I've just never fully connected with. And I just think that there are better examples of that. And a lot of them could could be also albums that are still very popular and could also be called overrated. So I went with 40 Below Summer with Invitation to the Dance. This is a super fun album just in general. And if you're looking for that wild kind of crazy kinetic vocal performance that Draymond brings to the mix, 
you're going to get it here along with the more kind of like diverse approaches to the instrumentation, the changes in pacing, all of that. You're, you're going to get it here with great songs with cringy lyrics, but still fun to scream along with. We the People, Still Life, Rope in particular, which was one of the kind of like big singles, if you can call it that, because it definitely didn't get a ton of airplay. Wither Away, Step Into the Sideshow in particular has a very kind of disturbed sounding vocal intro too. So yeah, if you haven't listened to this album, I highly recommend it. And I think that start to finish, I personally find it to be a lot more enjoyable than any of those disturbed albums. Flipping the script again, we have the Black Dahlia Murder with Miasma. This is one of those albums that's so beloved among the fan base that there are tons and tons of memes about it. Like check out the group pages or like the Reddit, you will find tons of people posting very amusing Miasma memes. And rightly so, because it is a really good album. And from another very consistent discography, where I'd say there are no actual duds. It's also, I'd say, like in the upper half of their discography, but I think they have better albums in general, and key amongst them would be Ritual. This is always my pick for the best album of their entire discography. Some people would agree with that too, so this wouldn't necessarily be called like an underrated album, but I do think that in comparison to Miasma, I think it deserves a lot more. And honestly, there are other albums from their discography that I would put above Miasma as well. Personally, I'm even on that unhallowed train. Like, I think the debut is just a really awesome, solid debut that I listen to a lot more. Really good stuff. You can't go wrong with really any Black Dahlia Murder album, but this would often be the one I'd pick for a new listener. Next up is another album that I've talked about quite a bit, and that is System of a Down with Toxicity. Again, no question, amazing, landmark, album very important i was in awe the first time i saw the chop suey music video premiere it is great like there's a lot of fantastic things about this album commonly listed as their best but i disagree because i personally think that the self-titled album their debut is much stronger it's like yeah toxicity has like the big memorable singles and those are great songs but i'd say like in between those there is some kind of like filler e kind of stuff and the self-title doesn't have any of that if you ask me you start really strong with sweet pea you follow that up with no which is one of their best songs for sure sugar is a fantastic single very fun with an endlessly repeatable transition section with the kind of like skit spiders for something slower more atmospheric something faster heavier you got war and then absolutely soil to me is maybe their best song of all time it's one of my personal favorites i think it's their best example of their guitar work period i don't think they've ever had guitar work as solid as on that song so yeah toxicity is great but system of a down it's just better. Staying in a similar territory this time, we have Linkin Park with Meteora. Like I've said a lot in my videos, especially the latest new metal tier list, a lot of people seem to put this on the same level, sometimes higher than Hybrid Theory, and I just don't think that that's accurate personally. There are some really solid tracks on here. I do think it's at least the second best in their discography. You've got some mainstay tracks on here, like Somewhere I Belong, Faint, from the inside, breaking the habit, numb. But kind of like that last album, I feel like in between those, there's some kind of like meh filler material that I don't really come back to a lot. I don't find to be as strong and consistent as Hybrid Theory. But I decided also I wasn't just going to choose Hybrid Theory as the alternate example because that almost feels too obvious. Some people would argue that album is overrated for other reasons. So I was kind of racking my brain like what would I recommend instead of this? And really it's probably some of the albums of Chevelle. If I'm going for around the same time frame we could go with Wonder What's Next. And yeah it's not the perfect one-to-one -one comparison. You don't have the DJ, you don't have the hip-hop elements, but as far as kind of the overall atmosphere, the vibe, and kind of the vocal choices. I think there's a lot to love in tracks like Send the Pain Below, Closure, Comfortable Liar, The Red, just really good stuff. I could also recommend Sci-Fi Crimes, which is a little later on my personal favorite Chevelle album. But yeah, I think that both of these are good examples of albums that I think do a better job of kind of achieving the same or similar goal as Meteora more effectively. All right, moving to a more recent one in a different genre, we've got At The Gates with To Drink The Night Itself. Now, opinions seem to be at least a little bit split on this one, especially among the critics out there, but 
I see a lot of fans kind of list this as one of their favorites, which really surprises me. Like, fan response to this album seemed to be pretty strong. There seem to be a number of people out there that think that of the, like, post-reunion albums, this is among the best. And I just could not disagree more. Like, honestly, personally, I think that this is their worst post-reunion album. It's not their worst album overall, but it's just so bland. It's kind of that problem of if everything is at 11, then it all just becomes this, like, amorphous blob of sound that I just get nothing from. And I've tried, y'all. Like, when it first came out before I reviewed it, I spent a lot of times re-spinning it over and over again, seeing if, like, something new would come out of it. Just sometimes that happens. But even years later now, when I revisit it, it just does virtually nothing from me. It's another one of those albums where the title track is a total banger. Like, no question there. One of their best songs, arguably. But... The rest of it, I could totally just never listen to it again, and I'd be totally fine with that. I think At War With Reality is definitely superior to this one, but still not my favorite. Personally, though, and this may be controversial, which is my favorite thing to do on these types of lists, I think that The Nightmare of Being is their best post-reunion album. Now, a lot of the people who are just sort of, like, hardcore, they want At The Gates to sound a particular way and stick to that, like, I get that and that's fine, but personally, I think that that sound for them is just sort of tired at this point, and they just will never do it as well as they did on Slaughter of the Soul. So for them to, on the Nightmare of Being, make this switch into this more progressive, more symphonic and kind of grand approach, I thought it was a very wise move. You're still getting those same ingredients from the earlier works, but they're tossing in a lot of new stylistic flourishes and things that just make it a whole lot more interesting and engaging, and it ended up being one of my kind of like lower key favorite albums of that year. So yeah, if you ask me, The Nightmare Being, way better, way, way better <laughs> than To Drink the Night Itself, which is just sort of a lesser rehash of things that they've already done. All right, I feel like this is another big one, and this is Gojira with Magma. This one seems to be spawning this, like, seemingly endless debate that I constantly see in message boards and other places, and I at least feel vindicated now with my pick that I'm going to mention that the issue is not merely that they change to a more streamlined rock approach. It has some really great songs like Silvira and Stranded, which are regulars in my playlist, but it just leaves something to be desired as a full listen. I find myself to be kind of bored. Again, I think that it has some moments where it just sort of like has that filler material that I skip over. Unlike Fortitude. And this is the debate, and I think it's going to go on for a while. When Fortitude came out, there were the Magma for Life people all of a sudden that just said that this sucks, Magma is way better, and then there were people like me who said Magma is fine, but Fortitude, I think, does everything Magma was trying to do, but better. And again, I feel vindicated because it's like, this is another kind of more rock-oriented album, but I love it, and I actually think it's one of their best albums. It's really enjoyable, and the problems that I had with Magma are not present here. I enjoy every single song, and there's a lot of variety, there's a lot of different textures, they still have those really heavy, intense moments, then they have the more kind of down, sort of crowd-pleasing, chanting, swaying moments, you've got some more like experimental stuff. I just think as a complete package, it's much more impressive, and I have noticed that now that some time has passed, I've recommended a few people go back and re-listen to it who haven't since it came out, and the response has been overwhelmingly positive of like, oh wow, like I actually do like this a lot more for some reason. So maybe give it another shot. All right, so we're moving into some top shelf, highly regarded albums for these last two. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> but this next one is Celtic Frost with Two Mega Therion. Now, I own a hard copy of this album. Really enjoyed. Great album cover. Like, I love the work of H.R. Giger, of course. Big Aliens fan. But ultimately, the music on this album leaves something to be desired. Like, I respect it. I appreciate it. I see its importance to kind of the development of kind of several genres at the time. But overall, like, it's not an album that I really enjoy re-listening to over and over again. And you can let me know down in the comments if you are one of those people that, like, really adores this album and can't stop listening to it. Help me understand why, because I just don't totally get it. But if I had my pick of the best Celtic Frost album, and this is sort of hard for me to do because I barely even consider it to be a Celtic Frost album, and that's Monotheist. Like, without question, this is the best album front to back. It is just so heavy 
and punishing. The atmosphere is unmatched. The problem is, it barely sounds like Celtic Frost, right? It, it, it basically is a completely different thing. It's basically Triptychon. Like, this was Tom G. Warrior segueing into the new sound that he wanted to go into with his new band, but still under the Celtic Frost moniker. So really, it's it's sort of like the first Triptychon album, just under a different name. That aside, though, I just think everything about the songwriting, the lyrics, the writing, it's just so damn impressive and just so punishing. It's, it's relentless, really. Like, you come out of this album and you kind of want to die. <laughs> like, it's, it's really rough, like really depressing, soul-crushing stuff, but it's done so effectively. And y'all regular viewers know I don't really dig Doom, but as far as like those Doomy style albums go, this is one of the best ones you can find. And then last but not least, we always have to go out on a big name and it's gonna be Megadeth with Countdown to Extinction. So every thrash metal band has a clunky 90s era when they try to kind of match the current era where alternative rock and grunge are kind of like reigning supreme. It's like, okay, how do we still find our place in this new musical landscape that we found ourselves in? And for a lot of people, for Megadeth, it seems like out of this era, the album that gets like the most like apologists is Countdown to Extinction. It's kind of like their black album. And it's okay. It's got some fun moments on it, like Symphony of Destruction. I like the swing of sweating bullets, but it's another one of those also like needlessly long albums, which was just a trend at this time. I'm okay with that if the album is more kind of complex and progressive, but for this one to be a more like straightforward rock outing, it really kind of like stretches things to the brink. But for me, if I'm going to pick a Megadeth album out of the 90s era that I think is superior to that one, it's actually Cryptic Writings. This is still going for that more mainstream appeal, but it definitely worked out in particular on this one. And it's Another one where it's a misnomer to call it underrated because it actually did debut number 10 on Billboard 200. It's certified platinum. Trust was nominated for a Grammy. So I have no delusion that this thing is like this, oh, this poor under-respected album. But it's just like in fan circles, I hear everyone talk about Countdown to Extinction from this era. And I don't hear a lot of them talking about cryptic writings. And make no mistake, I'm still not as into it as the earlier thrash Megadeth albums, but I do like a lot of stuff that's going on here. I think it's a more enjoyable listen from front to back. I especially enjoy Almost Honest, which I am kind of biased towards because the remix was on the Mortal Kombat Annihilation soundtrack, which I cannot shut up about. I probably brought it up in at least like 15 videos at this point. I also enjoy the strings on Use the Man, and Mastermind and Disintegrators are actually kind of low-key bangers with those riffs. Another controversial statement here, I mean, I think moment for moment it may even be a bit more consistent than Peace Cells, even though the high points on that album are undeniably way higher. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? So yeah, if it's been a while, give Cryptic Writings a new spin and see maybe how you feel about it. Y'all, if you enjoyed this, check out this playlist for even more of my most overrated metal albums that I've talked about, or check here for more albums that I have been really enjoying. Let me know down in the comments, what are your most overrated metal albums that I have not included so far? And as always, just thank you for watching, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.